We presented a study looking at a BET-BROMO domain inhibitor for the treatment of relapsed refractory lymphoma in a first in human phase one study. And we presented um, preliminary results of an ongoing study. We're yet to reach the maximum tolerated dose and we've escalated multiple times, currently dosing at 300 milligrams daily, days one through 14 of a 21 day cycle. Now BET inhibition is a brand new target within non-Hodgkin lymphoma. BET bromo domains uh, uh, are proteins that bind to acetylated lysine on histone and non-histone proteins. And what these do is recruit the readers of DNA and promote transcription of DNA. And so what that means is potentially by targeting these BET bromo domains, we can affect whether DNA is transcribed or whether it remains untranscribed, suggesting that downstream target genes might be modulated by the binding or not binding of BET proteins using a BET inhibitor. And this is particularly of interest if you have oncogenes that have been difficult to target previously. One such oncogene is MYC, which has proven a very difficult oncogene to target directly. But we know MYC lies at the heart of Burkitt lymphoma, uh, is translocated in 8 to 10 percent of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and is widely expressed in many more tumors than that. And so we thought that by regulating transcription of MYC using BET bromo domain inhibition, we might be able to modulate MYC expression and exert beneficial effects. Additional targets of MYC include BCL2, a potent anti-apoptotic protein uh, which drives uh, lymphogenesis, as well as NF-kappa-B target genes and others. So we started at a very low dose and have dose escalated up. And we've enrolled a number of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patients, as well as uh, follicular lymphoma patient, marginal zone lymphoma, and mantle cell lymphoma. What we found as far as tolerability in this phase one study is that the drug has generally been very well tolerated. We've had a few dose limiting toxicities, but we haven't had more than one in a given dose level and thus have not reached a maximum tolerated dose. The most prominent toxicity appears to be thrombocytopenia, which is directly caused by the drug. And upon stopping the drug at day 14, we see a relatively rapid rebound in time to start the next cycle on time. As a result, we've not had to limit our escalation to date. And again, we're currently at 300 milligrams. What we do know when looking at pharmacodynamic markers of BET inhibition that we are hitting our target proteins. So with a biopsy of a responding patient, for example, if we look at their initial tumor biopsy, we see bright MYC expression by the tumor cells. When we look at a biopsy just a week later, we find that the MYC protein expression has dropped down dramatically, along with a decrease in KI67, showing that we're knocking down both MYC expression and tumor proliferation, even with just a short interval on treatment. Looking at a peripheral blood marker called CCR1, we find that once we get over 200 milligrams of therapy uh, on a daily dose uh, on days 1 through 14, that we're truly shutting down uh, uh, BET bromo domain targets in the blood. And furthermore, if we look at responders on the study, all, all but one of them have occurred at 230 milligrams and above, which is where we can clearly see we're hitting our, our pharmacodynamic target by knocking down CCR1 using BET bromo domain inhibition. So what we can see is we've seen a number of responses. We've seen two uh, complete responses in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, as well as a partial response in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. We've seen a nice response in follicular lymphoma. We've also seen a number of extended stable diseases greater than six months in follicular lymphoma, marginal zone lymphoma, and in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So while this is an early study, it's as of a brand new target within non-Hodgkin lymphoma, we're seeing that this drug can be given safely, uh, it can be escalated to therapeutic doses, we're hitting our pharmacodynamic target, and we're seeing responses in multiple B-cell lymphoma histologies. So we're excited to do correlative studies to identify who these patients are who are responding, be able to predict them up front, and ultimately be able to combine this drug with other targeted therapies.